Now, what about you, uh, Bubaka? Uh, do you believe that uh, the rebels uh, in your country have legitimate political grievances? I don't think so. I mean, you, you have to look at the history of everything. Like, um, Mr. What do you think, what do you think they're fighting said. for? Why, why would they take up arms? Well, you have a lot of traffic in that region. So they're trafficking to, to, they, they are fighting to conserve that traffic. You have a lot of drugs. You, I don't know if you remember in 2009, he had a, a plane that crashed with tons of uh, cocaine. Nobody saw that. Mm -hmm. You have other traffic, cigarettes, arms. It, the, the region is big and it's plain for, to do anything you want to do. So their revendication is not really political. It's just to keep what they have, the traffic going. Because if you look, like Mr. Trower just said, let's go back a year ago, on January 24th, when they attacked Agalok. It was not the MNLA only. You had Ansardin with them. They executed militaries. They committed atrocities. They were with Al-Qaeda at that time. And even after that, in June, they even allied themselves with Al-Qaeda and Ansardin. They even drafted a paper and signed it. I remember Ag Najim went on TV and defended that. So what do you call them? Do you, do you, do you call them? Uh, Let's just call them what they are, Al-Qaeda. They are terrorists. They are terrorists? That's what they are. They are, not, they are not liberators? You have a political you, know, you know as well as I do, Bubakari, that uh, there, there, there are people who will tell you that uh, one man is a terrorist. Maybe another one is a liberator. And I'm glad that you say that. But look at what happened. When the French and the Malian troops went to Gao and Timbuktu, what happened? The population came out with flags of Mali and France. They were saying, uh, uh, um, long live Mali, long live France. Right. But you didn't see any flags of the MNLA? Well, perhaps because of uh, some of the activities uh, by uh, this uh, Al-Qaeda-linked group, <laughs> Ansardin, That's exactly which right. reportedly believes in Sharia, and in fact was trying to enforce Sharia. But they were allied with MNLA. I mean, if you're allied with someone and you get control over that region, aren't you the same? What, 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 what well, I you know, there is this uh, on again, off again marriage between Ansardin and MNRA. Mm. Uh, but frankly, what, what, what is politics after all? In politics, you know, they are neither mm -hmm. permanent <laughs> adversaries mm -hmm. nor permanent allies. Mm -hmm. They are merely permanent interests. Mm -hmm. huh? When the interests, you know, change, the alliances keep shifting True. precisely because mm -hmm. they are after their interests. Mm -hmm. Don't you sincerely believe that uh, the, some of these rebels, especially those who claim to represent the interests of the Tuareg, have legitimate political interests? Can I, can have I respond? they in fact been marginalized I, I'll politically jump. in Obama? I'll, I'll, I'll jump to that. The spokesperson of the MNLA is in French. In France, he's called Ag Asarid. Meaning? Uh, that's his name. That's his last name. His, na his name is Musa Agasarid. He's the one you see on TV all the time. He's the spokesperson, official spokesperson for the MNLA. On September 2011, he was sitting at the inaugural ceremonies for a um, uh, presidential candidate in Mali, in Bamako. He even, he even gave a speech saying that this candidate is my brother. I believe in Mali. I believe in the entirety of Mali. I believe this uh, candidate can do better for Mali. That's why I support him. And four months after that, you just switch and you are being marginalized? That doesn't make sense. I that's, mean, we, we have to be logic that, here. 